Hi, my name is Amir and I'm going to give you a quick overview on the new features of the Cookie Muse blog version 1.18 and show you how to upgrade from the version 1. We have been delighted to receive your kind positive feedback on the first version so far as we truly value your satisfaction. It has been only a few weeks since the original release, but we have listened to your requests and implemented a number of new features, which I'm sure you will like. If you have purchased the first version, you are eligible for a free upgrade. Just log into your cookie.com account and go to the Downloads section. With the new update, there is more customizability, such as free adaptation of the front-end wording and the dates and times. Picking or changing the creation date for each post is possible. There is a new way for easier implementation of sharing buttons. A new and powerful Recent Posts widget is available for dynamic loading of your most recent posts on a separate page. And there are lots of other improvements. Let me first show you how to upgrade from the version 1. If you have already designed your blog in Muse, you don't need to redo the whole design. You can leave the template elements as they were and only copy the new main widgets for the blog and the category menu. I mean these two dark colored bars. You can, for example, delete the old library, import the new one, make a blank page, drag the widget onto the page, and copy and paste only the main widgets into your existing blog page. If you have made any custom adjustments in the widget menus, you can do them in the new widget in the same way. It is important to attach the new PHP file in the widget menu, otherwise you will receive a version mismatch error. So please make sure you are attaching the Muse blog main PHP file which comes with the new version of the blog. Please note that if there were any custom modifications on the PHP file to match it with your server settings, you will need to transfer the additional codes into the new version. If this was the case with your server, please open the old file in a simple text editor, copy the additional line of code, and paste it into the new file at the same place. If you have difficulties with this part, submit a ticket at cookie.com with a zipped version of your old modified PHP file and we will be glad to help you. Before publishing, please note that your blog contents, settings and accounts are stored in the database and the config files and the images in a directory named blog image uploads. If you have selected SKULite, there will be a museblogdb.skulite file generated by the Muse blog on your server. For MySQL, there will be no generated file since it has its own database server and stores the data elsewhere. If you want to keep the posts and the settings of your blog after the upgrade, do not remove the mentioned files and the directory. You may either overwrite the new files, or you can remove them all except your contents and re-upload everything from Muse. I would recommend not to remove anything and just publish from Muse or upload by FTP and let Muse or your FTP client overwrite the old files. In this way, the contents of the blog will be safe since Muse will neither generate those custom files nor remove the images directory. Of course, it is recommended to keep a backup of your content files before doing any upload, just in case. Now I have republished my Muse project containing the new blog widget and it is already processing and displaying my existing contents. You'll note that I do not need to reactivate the blog since I kept those files. If for any reason the PHP file in the assets directory is not correctly replaced with the new version, you will receive the version mismatch error. In this case, Simply log into your server using an FTP client, remove the PHP files in the assets directory, and upload the new muse blog main.php file that comes with the version 1.18. 
Now let's explore some of the new features. After you have updated your blog, please open the Blog Settings section. If you scroll down, you'll see a number of new fields and options. There are new options for multilingual or personal customization of the front end. Here you can change the language and the formatting of the date and time. If I, for example, change the date language to French and hit Save, it will display Février instead of February. You also have further options for the formatting. An important new feature is that you can now fully customize the wording of the block front end. You may be making a non-English website, or you may prefer a different wording than the default. Now you can put in whatever words you want. Click on the Customize Front End Wording option, and suddenly a number of new entry fields appear. For the sake of testing, I will change one of these and type in something with special characters. Now again, I hit Save and go to the Posts list. Here you see that this has been changed. I can also simply switch back everything to the default wording by deactivating this option. Although the custom wording remains internally saved, the wording of the website is conveniently switched back to the default. Another option here is a custom field for an HTML code to be appended to all posts on the post page. This could be for example used for sharing buttons. We have a special widget for sharing buttons by addthis.com. I can set up an account at the website and configure a personal toolbar. I can place the add this refresher widget by cookie onto my blog page and paste the second code here. Again I hit save and if I enter a post page you'll see the toolbar here. There is a new option on whether non-admin authors should be allowed to rename or remove categories. This is a safety option since an author potentially could remove a category in which also posts by other authors exist. Now if you disable this option, the category renaming and removing options will become deactivated for all authors except the administrator. Another requested feature was the custom setting of the creation date of the posts. Now there is a date picker on the post editor and you can pick any past date as the creation date. You can also change the appearance order of the posts since they are sorted by date. Look what happens if I edit this post and change its date to an earlier one than the post below. As you see, the order is now reversed. Some of you have already tried out the pre-release version of the recent post widget for Cookie Muse blog. Now a revised Ajax version of it is included in the blog product package. The widget will allow you to automatically display a number of the most recent blog posts on a different page than the blog. For example, you can put it on the home page and if the user clicks on any of these posts, they will be redirected to the corresponding post page on the blog. With a new version, you can also narrow this down to a certain category and even put several recent posts widgets on a page. Click a category on your blog and you'll notice the number at the end of the URL. If you enter this number in the widget, it will pull only the most recent posts of that particular category. These were the most important new features in the version 1.18. There are also some other optimizations about which you can read on cookie.com. We thank you for choosing Cookie, and I wish you ongoing fun with your Muse blog.